Hello everyone. This is Amber Two Thousand here. Welcome to my channel. Well, I play a variety of games and do new relations for fanfics. I'm really hoping you, you enjoy my content. If you do, make sure to comment below. Leave a like and subscribe with the notifications on. Right, until next time, this is Amelie2000. Welcome to my channel. So, hi. The only link left. Chapter 20, An Instant of Redemption. There seemed to be a limit on the maximum speed. This could reach as he traveled between realms, realities, timelines, and universes. Wanting to go faster was pointless, as the Wedstreak Bond had once attempted to increase her space at her speed. Yet the amount of extra effort made no difference. On top of that, Pearl was with her. She didn't want to try anything that could potentially harm the brunette. Other than ensuring her parents were safe, the girl in her arms was her number one priority. She loved her. The time travel speed didn't really matter, though. The popularity of success didn't depend on how fast she could travel, but whether it was point in the timeline she and her girlfriend would turn. For the next step, Success or failure were determined by Paul's actions. This had been around way so enough to know the Wasser's sight had its limitations. She wouldn't be able to see the outcome of her, of her decisions if they directly impacted those she loved or her own survival. Though, it did seem like way so knew Marzuzza needed a string of frame so she could light it with Kate's recording. Maybe, like everyone else, the washers are very grow f from, from plasters. Rachel puts boundaries by traveling out of her realm and helping Dessa's parents each time they were in danger. Maybe she continued to level up during her travel as the washer. Despite wanting to explore her new ability, Dess couldn't concern herself with Rachel or the limitations at that moment. She was restricted from fully seeing what could come next after they returned. Like a fit mist in the forest, the possibilities were hazy. They were mist round and out of order like a trillion piece puzzle with no corners to help put it together. This new pole didn't understand her ability yet. She didn't even know she had a power as far as death could see. Several moments from her past revealed what the girl could do, but the painter was in a state of denial. Her first two experiences could have been viewed as Kurozo Deso, but the fear was clear. She was the only one who could challenge death, and Death knew exactly how the person in the light to listen. Sliding so beside the wearing room window, nervously picking out the fast wood blinds, Esther kept watch while Masters and Chloe's bodies remained still on the couch, side by side. She so used two fingers to slightly part the shades of creating a gap wide enough to see down both sides of the street and across the world. The former Zorak no longer cared about her past faith, nor did she allow intrusive thoughts about not fulfilling her purpose to enter her mind. Her once ch ch chance at the redemption was to protect the married couple's bodies while they did whatever it was they needed to do. So it wasn't quite sure what Koi was up to, but after she closed her eyes, after her thought she saw her master's body self, monstrosity barely enough to even perceive it. <clears throat> Suddenly, she noticed it again, out of the corner of her eyes, this time she knew Without a sound of doubt, that master's body moved. Esther twisted around the face of the couch they were laying on. 
So he tiptoed over and looked down. She could see the paleness in the brunette's cheeks slightly failing with color. Leaning down, Elsa placed her ear as close to Master's mouth as possible without trusting her. As he could hear barely detectable tiny streams of air moving in and out of her mouth. Holy damn! The blonde haired girl whispered, eyes widened. Chloe is saving her, but how? As soon as the hearts questioned in her mind, Esther heard an almost metallic buzz fill the room. A cold, dark breeze created goosebumps on her skin. And an obvious feeling of dread filled her heart. Hello, Esther. Mazuva spoke before an embers chuckle. What are you still doing here? The girl's heart rate increased and fell and velvet her mind. She stood from her cow crossing position over the two buddies on, on the couch, turning towards the interior of the room. Esther made eye contact with death. The woman smiled as she took a step closer. Stay your back, m m Ziza. The girl's arm was ascended and her palm hold out flat per to the floor and ceiling. Despite being afraid at a deep level, down to her very own very soul, Elsa found a redeeming chorus somewhere, somewhere inside her. Why would you risk your life for them? Would they do the same for you? The woman's words had no effect on Esther. Though, she knew keeping deaf talking was the best way she could by massacring Chloe more time. Maybe they would! The good people with big hearts! She racked her brain with, for whatever combination of words she could think of that would distract and delay my sister from getting to the bodies. Oh, please! Trust me, those two will watch the child word burn as long as they were together. Dust took another step closer. She chuckled. They're the villains here, and they don't even realize it. Get out of my way, chuckle. Child, there's no need for you to die as well. I'm not afraid to die. Esther afraid we stay in the room for some sort of item to aid her in the distraction. When she knows a water iron poker hanging beside the fireplace, she reached down and grabbed it in her hands. She hold it back like a baseball bat, reddening to strain. Do you really think you could challenge me, weak girl? Can you see them? Esther had an idea. Do you see them on the cows? Do you think it's all that coy with this lay there and not defend herself? Mazuza halted her pulse. She took her head to see around the girl that stood behind herself and the couple on the cows. Sorry about that. Ugh. I hate that. That is odd. But it doesn't matter what she's doing. My need is greater. Everybody needs me the fittest mess. Chloe thinks she's going to help Mass. The girl with long back hair begun. I guess they somehow connected. I don't know, really. But she trusted me to watch over them in case you showed back up. I plan on making sure you can't destroy them. Of course they connected. Do you know how many times Chloe was on my doorstep a few years ago? Matt somehow pulled her back every time. i never seen that before. So it's a willful control over death. It was annoying at first. Then I screwed the up it. But this time, I need them dead. Both of them. This is the important... For everyone, don't you understand? I understand that you are being a wet wits. There has to be another way. Holding everyone on blind fate until your mars massively solve your problem isn't the right way. Trust me, I would know. And at first, Mars was standing nose to nose with the girl between her and her destination. One small movement and we'd be tussing. Then you die, child. It doesn't have to end this way for you. Esther swallowed hard. She slowly stepped to the side, giving Death a clear pass to Mass and Chloe. There's a good girl. 
They were in trouble, then turned and faced the married couple. As soon as Miss Richard took a step towards the couch, Esther tightened her grip on the fire poker with both hands, squeezed it up like a spell above her head. This is just noticed the girl making a move. The former dog thrust the pointed end through the woman's head. Anyone trip on Esther in the other. Ah! Mother's a stream. Someone from the women's room chores the kiss in the hallway. Ah! You fucking little shit! She just recalled the item that was now part of her, whipping at the spots where it entered and exited her head. Esther ran over to the bodies and put one hand on each, uh, each of their outside cheeks. Whatever you're doing, you have to do it now. I bought you a little more time, but it won't last. Please, Mass. Please, Chloe. Come back. Mass Fackery searched the realm, seeking those that perished in, a, in the Kaya Bay storm of 2013. She didn't have much time, so she hastily pushed through the crowd, moving countless bodies out of her way. She could feel Chloe's energy still inside providing her essence with the boost it, ne it needed, and it gave her confidence to continue going. She badly wished her favorite person could see what she was seeing, but didn't want to wish it. There were so many lost souls gathered in dust as well. Mass figures she could search for a hundred years and might never find those she sought. Emily, after passing by thousand she didn't recognize. The Renek decided to give up. She couldn't search forever, and she knew her purpose for being there was to free those that were trapped. Mouse turned towards the closest body and looked into her crowded eyes. Again, she could see the woman's essence deep inside, like a tiny whiff of light. So she decided to last on. This time, however, she didn't pull it to the surface. She pivoted it to her left and grabbed onto the man's essence beside her as well, quickly blowing at the same time. Thoughts flew out and the souls vanished. So it's getting more rhythm and putting more affinity affin with the process. Wow, sir. If I can last onto multiple souls at a time, maybe I can do this more quickly than I thought. She figured she would be able to carve a path through the Sea of Souls and free so many more. Then a new thought crossed her mind. Everything that happened to her previously ha had led her to that exact moment. She knew she could control time in a small pocket area now it's like she did when she held her, her own forehead after being struck by uh, Esther. She also recalled the time another version of herself opened up a one hole and saved Chloe from death well. By combining the two abilities, maybe she could create enough energy to save an extra personal amount of souls within a, within a just a few at a time. Her plan was a, as wishy as meeting Chloe in the mind space, like she badly wanted to do. But she needed more of her wife's energy in order to be successfully pull her plan off. A reunion was, a reunion was now necessary and it made Mass smile. She pushed through the crowd and made her way to a wall. Crossing down, she shut her eyes and told her inside. Beneath the wife's area where her power was housed, she easily located the space where the essence were cold together, and she dove inside head first. A heart race as the irritation of seeing her soulmate increased by the second. Finally, after a moment without vision, Grace Shattuck was gone and it replaced with the familiar ballroom area she so has grown to love. A childlike sense of wonder flowed through Master's body. So it was getting with assignment to see her wife again. It felt like a lifetime had passed since they were together. In a, ma in a matter of seconds, 
Matt's put Chloe's arms wrap around her and pull her into her chest. Matt's represented in Tree's back. The physical pleasure was almost overwhelming from simply trusting one another. The pleasure was missed with a deeply seated love the pair equally felt for one another. And it was breathtaking. Oh, Chloe, I miss you so much. Me too, Massey. Fuck! Chloe severed back tails as he felt. I watched you die, love. I fucking watched you die. It doesn't matter. We're here now, babe. Chloe leaned back and looked into Massey's eyes. You're so beautiful, she whispered. Grace alternating between her lips and her blue eyelashes. Like moths to a flame, the lips were immediately drawn together, staring into one another and twisting around the passion and intensity. The masks were entangled, and they stood around while the, t the tongues played a frenzy secret game of tag. They stayed that way, continuing to enjoy each other with excitement and fever. Until Mass abruptly pulled away, quoting a groan from her lover. Chloe, as great as it is to be with you, we need to conserve energy. I know, I know, but damn it. Their bodies still touched in the middle while they hold hands beside their hips, finishing a lot, foreheads touching together. Wait, Mass started. Where is your body? Right where it belongs, Dirk. Besides yours. What if Mazuza comes back and kills you while you're here? Well, I thought about that. Esther is watching over us. Can you trust her? Mass wasn't so sore. <coughs> Sorry about that. I think so. We sort of have to at this point. A moment of silence passed between them. Be it brief. Well, let me show you where I've been and what I've been doing. I can freeze shores, but I need your help, babe. Oh? Yeah? Okay. Of course you can. You're super mass. You can do anything. Come into me and see for yourself. We need, need, we need to focus our energies. I saw you. Mass was still crossing down against the wall in Dusty's realm, and Chloe joined her. How <coughs> <coughs> about that? When that happens, I can't waste the pause before I do it. I hate it so much. Mass was still crossing down against the wall in Dusty's realm, when Chloe joined her. She knew her wife could see what she was seeing. As he felt her inside. Holy shit, love! This place is awful! It sinks of suffering! I know, but this is what we have to do. Mass stood and stand the area to give her wife a better work. Damn! So many people here! Yep, and we have to free them all. How are we gonna do that? But what I can see, I think there are probably trillions here. Master's her partner's concern. Let me show you. She so faced the nearest body to a location, found the man's essence, freed him as she did several times earlier. It was a quick and smooth transition. Fuck! Mass, that was pretty badass! Not gonna lie. Now, help me this time. <clears throat> Mass lock lands onto two others. She felt a surge of energy ripple through her body. Like that? Yes, that works, babe. The brunette with her wife's support of line of energy lasts on and freed 30 or so souls in one fell swoop. Damn, Master, that was totally awesome sauce. Okay, so we can easily free a few handfuls. This next one should be even bigger. Are you ready, Crow? Yep, yep. 
Let's do it to it! Mass hold out her hands towards the sky and felt the wheel in her mind. The threads of time, sub subatomic particles and scar dust in the air felt like unseen sickers in the fabric of space. Her power's absence became mentally intentional and socially detailed. A wormhole bounced open and above their heads, causing a heavy breeze to kick up in the w realm. Blowing dust and dirt around. Summing the details of mid time and simplified areas, Mass combined her abilities. Whoa, dude! Corey birded, voice stressed and surprised. I need help, babe! Mass's body chambered. Not wasting any time, she felt Chloe add more of her energy into the mess. It's almost engulfed her at first. The mass adjusted her grip on the wormhole and focused Chloe's power into her own. On a massive seal, she gripped as many essence as she could handle. With one swift pull, the worm was lit up like fire, like a firework cell on the force of July. Dozens of souls were rapidly released at one time. There's dozens more, then hundreds more, then thousands. <clears throat> After a minute or so, Mouse felt weary, so she released the power and allowed herself a break to rest. The wormhole winked from a distance, and the wind dissipated. God damn, Mouse! Look! Slowly parading around and looking east to western, they were an entire section of the realm had been freed. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of souls were no longer there. How are you feeling, Miss Massey? I... I feel great, Ashley. I felt tired, then it went away. Honestly, I feel so alive. Even though, tell me, I guess I'm not. The small of the pill giggled. That's good, Mass. But I'm not ready to laugh about you dying us yet. Let's finish the job and get back to our bodies. Thus then, most souls started spreading out and walking around. The noisy vacant space in the realm allowed those souls, those still trapped, to have move, ha, ha, to have more room than before. From all the weapons, they were begun to fill in. Even though they freed many on a, on a long sail, there were still countless others who needed saving. As Mass was mentally preparing to begin the progress again, she noticed familiar faces in the distance. Holy shit! It can't be! What is it, love? Off the million of faces in the direction of Mass was working, Chloe couldn't tell who she had seen or not. Mass charged towards some people about 200 feet from where she had been standing. Them! She pointed. Oh. My. God. Corey's voice trembled as she must have realized who her wife was referring to. Mass trolled her gapple and walked up to the group. Dana? Trevor? Brooke? She mouthed. Don't barely any sound came out. Mass, are you okay? This can't be easy. I'm not even actually there and my heart is hella racing. She did respond. Her mind was occupied by seeing old friends whose lives were cut short because of the because of that devastating storm. Mass stood there and gawked at the trio. Mass? Chloe raised her voice to draw her favorite person to attention. Mass shook her head, left then white to focus back on Chloe. I'm sorry, it does. I mean, damn, babe. Yeah, me too. Chloe, should I speak to them? Can you can you even do that? Before you were with me, I freed a few souls. When I pulled the essences out slowly, they became a whale for a moment before passing on. I had a full conversation with a guy named Gabe. I could do the same with them, but I don't know if I can handle it. They remember the final moments before the storm claimed their lives. 
Do I really want to experience the horror? Maybe I owe them owe it to them to have to enjoy what they did. Listen to me, Mass. You don't owe anybody shit. The storm wasn't your fault. It wasn't. We way past feeling guilty about any of this. We never chose it. Maybe I could just hear the voices one last time. I don't think that's a good idea. It's your call, but if you want my vote, I say to just free them, just like we did last time. There's no need to rehash that shit. Out of the corner of her eyes, she knows a couple more she hadn't previously. Warrant, Frank, and... Oh, God. Corey recognized the last person as soon as Mass did. Mom! Mass could feel the tears shining down Corey's face as if they were her own. Her heart broke in a thousand pieces, not only for Corey's loss, but she loved Joyce as well and missed the woman to Miss Uri. She often wished she could have seen Joyce as a grandmother. The couple just strung the condale with their farts, not moving. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> I swear. Swing so strolled down a bit, and Mass could hear her own breathing. It felt like East breath was beginning to strain as he realized Corey's energy that was keeping her alive was depleting. Corey, you wait. We have to move forward. We don't have much time left. The best thing we could do for them is help them move on, pass on. Anything else would be for selfish reason. And we're not here for ourselves. We're here to free them. Mass heard her wife sigh. Yeah. Okay, Mass. Seeing her again, it fucking sucks, you know. Yeah. So let's free her soul, Chloe. Let's help her move on. Mass's breathing would turn to normal, and she could feel Chloe's as it's filling her up once more. Are you ready, babe? Chloe simpled one final time. And her voice was full of confidence once more. I'm the readiest. Hi, how are you everyone? This is the Magic 2000 again. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Because, you know, I, I really did enjoy making it. But. So I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, and subscribe with the notifications on down below. Till next time, bye!